This martial art is very honest. It's very brutal and it's very honest. That's what I like about it. Even though I'm outside of my comfort zone, I've been there so many times. It's a place where I know that I'm growing. It gave me purpose. It gave me a lot of meaning in my life. I think that's one of the most important things. The Vikings were the special forces of their time. They were the most sought after mercenaries in the world. And there's a reason for that. It's Glima. My name is Björn Aril Bråten, and I do the martial art of Glima. Glima, it's the form of wrestling that the Vikings used. It's from the Norse word of glimt, which is flash. It's supposed to happen quickly. We were occupied by Denmark for a while and then Sweden for a while. Glima then turned into this thing where you only taught it to your sons or your closest family members. That way Glima stayed a secret. That is why Glima is uh, very efficient and made the Vikings to some of the greatest fighters the world has ever seen. We start with a hand salve. After we have taken this, the fight is on. We don't wait for a bell to ring. We don't wait for the judge to say go. We're just into the fight. We grapple. I was born in a city called Drummond, southwest of Oslo. I was 13 years old. I was a wimp. I had no confidence, I was weak. I was uh, sitting in front of the computer watching television. I was just a nobody. I was introduced to Glima and uh, when I got there, I got kicked, I got beaten. I got told to do so many push-ups that I couldn't even count. It was horrible. Sometimes he cried after practice. He was so tired. It wasn't because he was sad or anything. It was just, there was nothing left. So he just cried, yeah. I was in a lot of pain, but I knew they didn't want to hurt me. They wanted to make me better. I stayed there, I worked hard. He had actually had two instructors in the beginning. They uh, started pushing him more and more. There were some other kids there too, but after a while they stopped coming and he stayed. I listened to the instructors. I wanted master classes. I wanted private lessons. That's how I came to the level I am at now. The rules of Glima is that to win, you need to get your opponent down on the ground and you need to get up and out of his range. You're not allowed to punch, I'm not allowed to kick him, I'm not allowed to elbow, hook, uppercut, none of those things. After we have taken Hansel, you can do any throw imaginable. This is wrestling. He's out of my range now. He has won the fight. That is how you win a Glima fight. I started becoming more disciplined. I started having a better physique. I'm watching the old uh, Glima championship. This is a Norwegian championship. Uh, I won gold in my own weight class. I was three times junior Norwegian champion in a row. I won the uh, Gudvangen Open three times. I've won my own weight class in senior championships twice. And I've also gotten second place in the open weight class. So I feel like I'm doing good. Now, before the students arrive, I'd really like to show you something, something that we train by and we live by. This is the Hovamol. It is uh, a book that was written in the Viking Age. People should live happy and friendly until their last day. The line, braving conflict, means a lot because life is a conflict. And that is something, because of my history and my background, it is something that I've pulled with me and pulled out of Glima, and it means a good deal no. to me. One of the reasons my instructors had my respect 
it's because they did the things they told me to do. They proved to me that the things that they're teaching me works. Up on your knees, up on your knees. And that's one of the things I'm trying to implement in my teaching. When I tell them to climb the rope, I do it first. Show them how fast it's possible to do it. I show them that it is possible. Quickly, I can go there. The main principle of Glima is balance, and that is not just standing upright and not falling over. It's balance in how much weight you put on one leg, balance in how much you lean forward when you punch. It's balance how much you invest in a throw. Your diet is balance. Your social life compared to your working life is balance. You need a balance in everything or else your world will crumble. So I use piano to ease my nerves. Uh, I play it because it's similar to Glima. It's similar in the way I train Glima. It's about coordination in both of them, where your hands are, where your eyes are. You can't look at everything at once. It's just something to get my mind of things and something I can relate to and help myself coordinate for Lima as well. My girlfriend is uh, Senia. She has done martial arts for quite a while before she met me. First time doing Lima was at the championship I hosted. Let's see, I'm gonna put some butter in the uh, vegetables. I hope you like it. She competed in that competition. She was competing against, I think, four <laughs> other competitors in the girls' class. You know, we started talking and things, things went from there. We just wrestle sometimes for fun. It, it's fun, because she's really good. She sometimes gets the best of me, and I still lose, so. Today is a quite big day for both me and my students. Uh, I'm going away in the military, so this is also a ceremony to say goodbye to one of their instructors. You know, leaving your students, it's, uh, it's hard. Tyr is my main instructor, and he's the one that sits with the most knowledge when it comes to the martial arts. This is a regular Viking knife, and every child had a knife, and kids being kids, what do they do in playtime? They start fighting. Yep. We have different types of glima. We have sport glima, where the principle is to not hurt your opponent at all. He's not supposed to have any sort of long-lasting pains. And then you have combat glima, to neutralize your opponent, to defend your own life. If I do like this, your intestines fall out. Do cuts everywhere. It's more efficient as well. Which means if I cut here, and I get your outside arm, then there's no arteries, there's no big veins and blood flowing through there. Go! Up! Today's hell training? Dead! It's a hell show. Up! No matter what they're doing, if it's technique, Dead. warm up, uh, grappling, wrestling, Up. no matter what it is, they're barely getting any breathing room. We're out in the snow, we train in the snow, we train in the ice. They're doing push-ups with their hands on the ice. They're learning how to tackle this situation. When we're on the snow, you don't know what's under the snow. It might be ice, you might slip, you might fall, so your balance needs to be on point. Our forefathers fought in this rough country, which is six months of the year winter. And so their style of defending themselves was based on how they worked with the terrain. We don't force them to do anything. It's the competition here that makes them push themselves, and they grow a lot. The hell training is leading up to my graduation to become a level two instructor. This is going to be combined with a lot of fighting. I need to be tested, of course. If he never knows when the kick's coming, he will tense the abdominals, and then he gets a better workout, he'll be stronger. There's no certainty in me graduating. There's things that I might not be ready for. I just need to be there in the moment and face the things that are thrown at me. Because when I'm there in the middle of the ring, I'm not in charge anymore. I'm the one that they're supposed to beat up for everything it's worth. It's something he's worked very hard to. This is fitting very nicely into the fact that he's going into the army in a week. It's something he's really burned for. Somebody step in. I love to compete. 
watch someone two meters tall, 150 kilograms, come running towards you. Come here. And right afterwards, you're fighting a girl that's 170, weighing maybe 50 kilograms. You have just as good a chance of winning both the fights because it's about technique and balance, not about strength. Oh, no, it's payback time. So I really, really enjoy it. And there's this big dopamine kick. So I'm happy all the time when I wrestle. Come here. It is so important that people carry on this tradition and keep it alive. Bjorn takes the information physically. He takes all the techniques. He takes the spiritual understanding. He puts it all together and he keeps it alive. Best day yet. I felt it went good. I managed a lot of fights. I went for it. Uh, even though I was in a lot of pain, struggled with breathing, got snow in my face, still pushed on. I feel great about it. What I really wish for my future is to bring Gleema with me. No matter what happens with me in the future, I wish that the principles and the discipline that I get from Gleema is uh, brought with me. I love that it's our culture and that I am so lucky that we here in Norway have a extremely efficient martial arts system that we can preserve our culture through this. <laughs>